there are more secrets of no lock. The second secret of no lock, and this is important to know, is that it it isn't really what it says. <laughs> like the word says no lock is not actually no lock. No lock is less lock. <laughs> it's it's it does really use some locks, and we can easily prove this. What I'm gonna do in my other session, I'm gonna copy this code. And I'm going to paste it in and we're going to get rid of our updates there. Our app has healed itself. It's no longer Haywire. And what we're going to do is we're going to start what looks like it would be a fully online operation, right? I'm going to open a transaction, which I don't normally need to do with an alter index rebuild command. I'm doing this simply so that I can leave the transaction open and show the effect of the locks without having to run everything at the exact same time. So I'm beginning my transaction. And I'm altering uh, my non-clustered index that I just created on that small table. I'm rebuilding it online. So I'm using expensive enterprise feature to rebuild my index online, but I have not committed my transaction. While that alter index rebuild is running, if I try to select from that table, even with no lock, and this would seem like it must work, my, my index rebuild is online and I'm using no lock. How could I be blocked? How could this happen? Well, wow, that, that query is taking a long time to run. It, <laughs> huh, it's at six seconds, seven seconds. If I look in Activity Monitor, it doesn't tell me everything, but it does tell me, okay, we've, we've got some lock weights again. We've certainly got some lock weights. And if I go ahead and look up at what's happening, here on this command, which helpfully says execute, I have a LCKM SCH S lock. I have a schema stability lock weight. I can get a little bit of information about this. I can look at the details of it in Activity Monitor and I can see, okay, this is the one who is blocked is my select top one query. I even have information that it is blocked by, if I expand this heading, it is blocked by number 63, and I can go down to 63 and say details. Okay, you're blocked by an index rebuild. But if I want to know more about the lock that it's waiting on and like, hey, you said no lock, why are you waiting on a lock? I don't get a lot of extra information here. There is a tool, a free tool called Who is Active? It's written by a fellow named Adam Mechanic. It is a great way to say, I want to get a lot of information about the activity running on my SQL server, and I want a lot of details. I'm going to use an option called get locks equals one. And I'm going to close out my activity monitor so that it's not still polling my SQL server. I'm going to open another window, and I'm going to run who is active. Looking at this, I can see the two queries who are running. I don't have all those other processes showing who aren't really doing anything right now. It just by default is showing me, okay, here is who's doing something or who has an open transaction. I love that it hones in on that stuff. It also gives me that wait info right up front and the blocking session ID as well. This session is blocked by session 63. If I go back here, sure enough, this is session 63. I can also click on these commands and see them too. So I like this better. I see this as a smarter, more intuitive activity monitor. And what I want to know, I used get locks equals one. And against a busy system, get locks, it has to look at all the issued locks and all the waiting locks. So it can be slow if you've got a lot of activity on your SQL server. So know that if you use this parameter, it can slow down who is active just because the dynamic management view at Pulse from can have a lot of info and be slow to return. But what I want to know is for my query who has no lock, okay, I said no lock. What lock are you waiting on? And what lock is being held by this online index rebuild? This is a little graph of all of the locks my no locked command wanted. Against the uh, database, it needs a shared lock against the database itself. That makes sense. I mean, even if I'm using no lock, what happens if someone drops the database while I'm running my query? And then also against ref.firstName, we have a schema stability lock that we are waiting on. For ref.firstName, someone else has a schema modification lock against it. That index rebuild, even if it's online, when it's online, 
It builds a nice, lovely new index structure, but it has to do a metadata change at the end of the operation where it switches in the new structure. And switching that in requires a modification lock on the object saying, hey, I'm changing something around. You really shouldn't use this table while I'm doing it. We can't get a schema stability lock for our no lock query while that's happening because even a no lock query has to make sure that the table isn't pulled out from underneath it while it's running. So no lock is really less locks needed. It can still be blocked and it can still be part of a blocking chain while I'm waiting on this, I may block others as well. In defense, I will briefly say, in defense of the alter index rebuild, we do have some new options in terms of this. I mean, it is definitely a bad practice to run your alter index rebuild and leave it in an open transaction like this. This is my fault. In recent versions of SQL Server, there are new parameters we have about if this gets blocked, if our alter index rebuild gets blocked, when it's trying to do something like do that really quick metadata change at the end that requires that schema modification lock, should it wait at a low priority so that it doesn't cause a big blocking chain and things like that. So I don't mean to show this as a uh, a prototype. This is not how you should run alter index rebuild, but it just is an easy way to show the locks that a no lock query will uh, require. So no lock absolutely does need some locks. Now that I rolled back or canceled that online index rebuild, my query became unblocked and was able to return. Uh, for some reason, in the year 1974, the name Condridge was popular and has uh, never been used since in the United States, at least not with five babies a year, because that's our minimum. We only get reported names when there's at least five babies a year with that name in this data set.